Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to First Cut. This is my Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse spoiler review. I'm so excited to get into this one with you guys because I want to talk about all the spoiler goodies I saw in this movie. Obviously, we have our main review up on the channel with RB3. Let's get into the spoilers with this one. Now, the first thing I want to get into is the animation in this movie. I said this movie is not just a love letter to Spider-Man, but to animation in general. The animated medium is on full display in this movie movie with different art styles, different styles of animation blending in on top of each other in order to communicate a message that is communicated throughout the entire movie. Obviously the biggest example is Gwen Stacy's world with the watercolor changing and shifting between the emotions of what Gwen is feeling and what her father is feeling in that moment and in that scene. I thought this was just a beautiful love letter of what this medium can do with shifting animations going back and forth with each other i really do feel like that's part of what this movie is it is going hand in hand with the themes of the movie and it blends so perfectly i really do feel like this is something so special that this movie accomplished with all the incredible animators contributing to it. The second big thing I want to get into is the Miles Morales story, which is a story about being an Afro Latino, a Latino living in Brooklyn, who is figuring his way out as a new Spider-Man, but also figuring his way out within his family and trying to balance that Spider-Man family lifestyle. And obviously the Spider-Man school lifestyle as well that we've seen in previous movies. But the idea of him trying to see if he can tell his parents the truth, but also him realizing who he is as Spider-Man and realizing that his future as Spider-Man is different because he's different, because his background, his identity, his culture, his people, the way his mother raised him is specific to what he can deliver to his own Spider-Man. I thought that was beautiful. And that's probably the biggest theme in the whole movie. Rio, his mom tells him that don't forget who you are, where you come from, who your family is, what your parents did and what your grandparents did to get you to where you are and when you go into the world and when you go into big places where people are going to claim to be smarter and better than you remember who you are and tell them who you are by saying this is who i am i know what i've done to get here and i know what i can do so don't tell me who i am and who i can't be and right when miguel tells spider-man that he shouldn't be spider-man and tells miles that he shouldn't even have been spider-man that moment is significant because he remembers what his mom told him. I thought that was such a beautiful way to communicate the message of, again, identity, culture, his background. Making Miles specific to who Miles is, is what makes him such a special Spider-Man. And that idea is so well communicated in this movie, I really do feel like that's the strongest point. Besides all the cameos and all the fun stuff, that theme and that message is done so well and it's so specifically Latino and so specifically Afro Latino that I do feel like it's one of the most beautiful examples I've seen of Latino culture and Latino identity using that to become a superhero and to be a superhero. It's such a beautiful way to communicate that and I really do feel like that's the best part of the whole movie. Now let's get to the side Spider-Man characters. Obviously Gwen is probably the biggest one in this movie. We start the movie off with her and her dealing with her father being the captain of the police and claiming that she killed Peter when she in fact did not kill Peter. So that whole mess of her family and her father and her emotional mess inside is dealt really well in this movie and it makes Gwen a lot deeper than she was in the first film, although she was great in the first one. It makes her a much deeper character and it makes her a, a really a, a co-lead in this movie, which I think was really special. But obviously, the other spider people I really want to get to, Spider-Man India, I thought was a lot of fun. I thought he was hysterical. His whole introduction was a lot of fun and his world is absolutely spectacular. But my favorite, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, it's Spider-Punk, my hobie. That's my guy. He really is that embodiment of like class classic 70s British punk that I really do love and, and I kind of grew up with so I do feel like that was such a special moment to see this character say the things he said in this movie which I thought were so bold and so dope but also so true and be the way he was as Spider-Man where he's 
basically kind of like mentoring Miles in a weird way where he's telling him, you can do your own thing. You don't have to follow these people. You can really tap into who you really are and just kind of forget this. And obviously he does it with a lot of jokes, but he still says it. And the way he's able to come in clutch with certain moments in this movie, whether it's giving Gwen Stacy the little travel device or helping Miles develop his powers with that electric power that he has. That's the kind of stuff that I feel like Hobie came in clutch and he really did become one of my favorite spider people in the entire movie. And obviously there's a lot of other spider people with the cameos. That chase scene was a lot of fun. Seeing all those spider people in Spider-Man and trying to point out which is which is perfect for super nerds like new rock stars homies. But this leads us to the big theme in the movie which is letting your universe die because you have to let these canon events happen. Which in this case for Miles, it's his father dying as the police captain and him letting that happen and the idea of Miles wanting to stop that being detrimental to the rest of his universe which according to Miguel is going to happen the problem is Miles is just not buying into that for two reasons one obviously it's his dad he wants to save his dad regardless but two I really do feel like Miles is also a genius like Miguel is, a scientific genius, a physics genius, and he's trying to come up with a way in which he can bypass that whole prediction and that whole formula and that whole algorithm where he can try and do both, right? Save his dad and save the universe and keep it intact. So I do feel like that's where Miles is coming from. He's not coming from a place of like, screw the universe. He's coming from a place of like, I think I can figure this out. Give me a shot and I can do it. So I don't necessarily feel like he's being too selfish in that moment because he does feel like he can try and bypass that whole prediction thing. But either way, I do feel like this idea of canon events is super meta because it's the idea of canon in comic world and what is acceptable canon and what isn't and what's you know the original story and what isn't the original story and what's the original backstory all this stuff that's considered precious to so many fans across the world this movie is doing a commentary on telling you to basically let it go and just let things be what it is and let it breathe and let it have its own identity and change and shift and basically do all the stuff what animation does right animation is supposed to be something so distinct and so different and it's supposed to shift and twist and turn and take different directions and I think that's the perfect way that this movie is doing the animated medium and doing what is considered canon. It's a beautiful meta commentary. I really do feel like this movie hits a different level of meta when it comes to that. Finally, let's get to the end, which is Miles figuring out that he's not in his own universe and he's actually in a different universe with no Spider-Man. This is the 42 universe where Miles is not Spider-Man, but instead the Prowler. And we get to see a different Miles who looks incredible, who looks like a G and really has his own style, his own way of looking at life, his own demeanor. I really did feel like this Miles that brought something different and it opened up a new door of possibilities for across the Spider-Verse. I'm so excited for this, the potential of what this universe is gonna bring and what this Miles Morales Prowler is gonna bring to the Miles Spider-Man, I really do feel like it's gonna be almost like a, a partnership. Obviously, I think it's gonna start off very rocky, but I think it will be some sort of union or partnership that they're gonna eventually end up teaming up to stop the rest of the Spider Society and Miguel and to really do their own thing because I do feel like Miles inherently does have that good inside of him. So regardless of his upbringing or whatever the hardships he faced in this world is, he's still gonna have that good inside of him. So I'm excited for Beyond the Spider-Verse. I think this was the perfect way to set up that movie and this was its own movie in itself as well i do feel like there's going to be a lot of criticism on the to be continued whole thing but i do feel like this movie lives up to the hype as far as being its own thing and having its own identity while still having fun moments cameos all that good stuff that makes you want to be in a spider-man movie so i do feel like it just is such a special movie with the animation, with the story, with the theme that I mentioned before. This movie lives up to the hype. But let me know what is your favorite part of Across the Spider-Verse. Who is your favorite new spider person? All that good stuff. Let me know in the comments down below. But either way, guys, for the First Cut crew, I'm going to be peacing out. So deuces. Peace.